Let's move on to the listener's favorite segment, the advice columns. Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it is, like we said, the listener's favorite segment, the advice columns, where we uh, read Dear Abby's columns, and we uh, talk about the horrible advice she gives, and then we help by giving our expert advice. And flip side, hopefully someday somebody will write to us mm. so that we can... <laughs> By the way, if you would like to write to us for advice listeners, email bigbeef.com. We'll be happy to answer any uh, queries that you may present us. Flip side, that uh, web address does not exist. <laughs> it is. Rob, do you want to say it? Yeah, the new email address to contact us is thebigbeefco at gmail.com. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, there you go. Well, I'm in a retard. <laughs> I was talking on my ass. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Right. Call me on it. Is, uh, all right. Well, let me let me start here. Uh, all right. Here is the advice, dear Abby. I was. Well, you gotta read the title. Read the title first. Oh yes. Okay. I don't have a After title. Parent restrictions force woman to fend for herself. This is like Thunderdome shit. <laughs> all right. <laughs> when forced to eat human meat, and now I have to hunt it myself. The Hunger Games. All right, dear Abby. I was recently diagnosed as gluten intolerant. <gasps> oh, it's a fucking horror. <laughs> My question is, when dining at a restaurant while everyone else is eating the bread that is served, is it acceptable to discreetly take a few gluten-free crackers <laughs> from my plate and snack on them so I'm not starving while waiting for dinner? Okay, now first of all, this <laughs> goddamn it's been so bad. Is this Mike and Molly chick? <laughs> <laughs> she can't wait fucking fifteen more minutes for a salad. How bad is this girl? She's like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> like, nom 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 nom. Gluten-free <laughs> crackers. <laughs> oh my. Okay, here we go. My husband thought it was inappropriate. Well, of course, because he doesn't want you to be fat as shit. <laughs> and he doesn't want to look like right. he's dating or married. <laughs> can't so stop. I, did, yeah. I did ask the waiter if he had gluten-free bread or crackers, but he didn't. And he looked at me like I was fucking retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I have many medical issues. <laughs> I'm I a sickly to... bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I should be put down. <laughs> I, I try to eat only what is healthy for me. And thought providing my own crackers was a minor deal. What do you think, Abby? Gluten intolerant in Florida. <laughs> wow. All right, let's just go down the list. Stanley, what do you think? Because this is quite easy. Listen, listen, bitch. <laughs> if you can't hold off for goddamn 15 minutes for your food to get out there, just start taking your insulin shots now. Just go ahead and hang yourself, please. I'm sure the rope will break under your fucking 500 pounds of fatness, <laughs> but at least try. Diabetes. <laughs> Make sure you wait until you win the Oscar. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> after the Oscars is over. <laughs> yeah, Nick, go ahead. What do you think? Uh, there's nothing to. Th I don't know. I agree with Stanley. This chick is just so fat she can't wait 15 minutes for her salad. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if you can't. What? Is she so jealous of people eating bread that she has yeah. to crack her? It's just it's bread. bread. It's bread. It's not like lobster bisque. Like, <laughs> you can get the prisoners. What, what are you worried about? Yeah, I mean, there's there's not a lot to, to add to that. I mean, Stanley's completely right. I mean, I, I'm speechless. I mean, I, she's got to be enormous. It's terrible. I'm going to go back and kill yourself. What I enjoyed was that... <laughs> I feel a lot of our advice is kill yourself. Yes, I <laughs> after 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 three episodes or this is the fourth. Yeah, it's, I think we have hit the it goes. Well, I enjoy the my husband thought it was a, inappropriate, which I picture my husband looked at me like I'm a fat cow as I try to pull out and sneak a cracker when we why, had. Why does she need to be included in like eating the bread part of the meal? I mean, can't you make conversation during that point? Yeah, seriously, instead of stuffing your face with your. Tasteless gluten free no, shit. No, no. <laughs> the, the beauty is everybody is eating the loaf of bread that was brought to them, and she tries to sneak a cracker as if no one's going to notice that no crackers were ever brought to the table. <laughs> I know. What's that 
fucking doing, Kyle? Come on. Here we are with a loaf of bread. Where the fuck did you get a cracker? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, fatty, you brought it in your purse. How bad are you that you brought food in your fucking purse going to I a just restaurant? So five hundred pound chick sitting there shoving crackers in her mouth, like and her husband. She's just yelling at her, like gluten intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Down her bearded chin. <laughs> <laughs> Who goes? Who goes to a fucking restaurant bringing food? I need a pack. I need a pack of meal because we're going to a restaurant. <laughs> it is a long drive to that restaurant, and who knows what we will have at this restaurant. So let me go ahead. It might be bread. <laughs> let me pack a meal. Uh, I, I don't. I don't even know what to say. So I agree with Stanley that listen, fatty. You don't fucking need to eat the bread. You know, there's times I go to a restaurant and I wait for my salad. I don't fucking have to, like, squirrel away a Hot Pocket in my fucking wallet <laughs> just to eat something while I'm at a goddamn restaurant waiting to eat something. I'm sorry. That just uh, makes no sense McGee, to me. you're the fattest. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, she should be ashamed for writing Dear Abby, who's probably rolling her eyes. All right, so here's what, here's what Dear Abby had to say. By the way... Um, I just I just want to point this out, the irony. So she signed it gluten intolerant in Florida, and Abby addressed it as dear GI, like GI tract. You need to get stomach like, staples. <laughs> <Just don't get laughs> <breathe. laughs> yes, yeah. I know. Dear needing to get stomach staples. It's good that you were diagnosed because gluten intolerance can cause serious digestive issues. Your husband may have had a bad day when he criticized you. <laughs> like every day of his life yeah. that he's been married? He happens to look at you. Because I see nothing wrong with someone on a restricted diet taking emergency emergency <laughs> <laughs> Is she in the fucking desert? <laughs> Is she dying? Oh my god. Okay. Gluten intolerance has gone undiagnosed with many people, but in recent years food manufacturers have created many products that are safe for them to eat. A common in custard's gluten intolerance should be It's bread! Bread is percent of gluten! What are they supposed to do? Hold on, finish that out, folks. Finish that sentence. It shouldn't be an insurmountable problem if the restaurant restaurant is asking in advance. So <laughs> you can call them ahead of time, like, could you make gluten free bread? <laughs> All they should say is no, do not come here, fatty. You eat, you eat, you go home. You don't come here. All right, dear Abby, I was standing in front of a restaurant with my mother in law and a group of relatives when she felt up my back and backside. <laughs> yes. We were facing the others when she put her hand around my back. First sideways, and then all around until she got down to my rear end. It felt like she was searching for something, but the weather was warm and my blouse was very thin. What? Mm. Whoa, this took a strange... Wow! That's like a Shyamalan right there, so I couldn't have hidden anything. When she reached my behind, she pressed her thumb hard in my hip bone and rubbed in a circular motion. Wow, she's trying to find the clitoris. (laughs) <laughs> in the hip bone. <laughs> That's right. what we haven't been looking at. <laughs> I feel extremely violated because her hand should not be anywhere near that region. My husband says I misinterpreted what she did, because, <laughs> but he has no explanation. No, my mom's not a lesbian. However... She did leave my dad 12 years ago for a woman. (laughs) And she has a haircut like a man. (laughs) I think her behavior is incestuous. When she visits, she also insists on sleeping in the master bedroom. Am am I overreacting? Violating? Or without them? Yeah. Yeah. Violated in Southern California. All right, so. My my next album, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) That's actually happened to me, so. So in Southern California? Yes. Uh, <laughs> tell that story on Oprah, Rob. That sounds like epic. we don't give a fuck about your rape story. <laughs> We're trying to entertain people here, not just like fucking make you feel better and sleep at night. <laughs> All right, here we go. What, what the fuck? All right. Wow. Well, All right. I gotta say that was definitely a twist I did not see coming when it was a woman the whole time. Okay, what's what's your here's okay? Let me give my advice real quick. Well, hold on, before you give your advice, I want to talk on a couple of things. First of all, she says I think her behavior is incestuous. Now, is an in-law really incestuous? It's no. just not the person, right? Right. They're just they're only related by law. Yes. I don't think it's incestuous. 
They no. Might be incestuous. I don't even know if that's. Incestuous. No, it's not. It's not because that dude just adopted his wife as his daughter, and they're still married. Wait, wait, what? You didn't see that in the news? <laughs> no, I must have missed. Okay, okay, she was topic. like a foreigner, and in order to get around it, he adopted her as his daughter. Whatever, just go on. Yeah, boots and gets it. <laughs> We're fucking talking about a woman getting photo up by her mother-in-law, and you're talking about some fucking Arabian dude, I assume. No, that... it's relevant. I mean, I was asking what the hell is incestuous or not. No, I... it's not because they're not blood-related. That's the, that's the definition of incestuous. Okay, so first she's retarded. Right. And then she says when she, when she visits, she also insists on sleeping in the master bedroom. Is this with them, without them? Is she, like, cutting up to the smell of the daughter-in-law? That is odd. That I don't understand. If she says, hey, I should get the master bedroom because I have a bad back or something, that's just a bitch. Do you think she's, like, smelling the sheets and her underwear? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. know. Well, and then here, she shoves her thumb hard in her hip bone. (laughs) I did not know that was the pleasure spot. (laughs) In my long years, I have been missing out on that. I'm dear... Yeah, dear Abby, thank you for telling me the secrets to pleasing a woman. I gotta tell you, whenever I dry hump my wife, it's usually on her hip bone. <laughs> she enjoys it. I'm pretty sure she enjoys it. That's the spot, though. Yeah. So, yeah. G spot was, you know, somewhere else. It's a myth. It's a myth. In reality, you just fucking jam your thumb into their hip. I want to remember the next time. I was like, mm-hmm. like that. <laughs> Dear Abby, said your hip bone's a sweet okay, spot. Here's my advice. This is how you can know for sure. You got to know for sure. You just can't go through life wondering, right? Next time, she's just got to, like, her mom's in her master bedroom getting for, ready for bed, right? The chick's got to slip in in just a nightgown, little nip showing, just a little hint, hint of nip. Side boob, side boob. Side boob, and then see where it goes. If the mother in law is like, oh, I'm just getting ready for bed. Good night. Thanks for hospitality. You know, whatever. She's like, or she's like, you need another hip rub. Then you know it's gonna be. So she's she's either a Southern Belle or a fucking black guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks for your hospitality, Twins. <laughs> need another hip rub. No, Stan, along those same lines. I, I don't think when she's getting ready in the in the master bedroom. I think maybe when they go out for coffee one day in the morning. The, the daughter-in-law should just, you know, slowly move in for a kiss and see how that kiss turns out, right? Is it a quick, hey, family peck, or does does the mother-in-law slip a little bit of tongue in that action? There you go. At a coffee shop, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is where she's got to be. Give me try, give me tongue. <laughs> <laughs> You got a videotape. I don't know. Hey, my advice to this chick is uh, just go with it, man. <laughs> <laughs> what is your problem? Stop being such a fucking prude. <laughs> hey, it's all free love, baby. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> I'm jamming his thumb in your hip. He didn't know what he's doing. Exactly. <laughs> now she knows where her husband got it. <laughs> this woman is older than you. She knows what feels good to a woman. Honestly, the hip is a woman's erotic zone. <laughs> what? Erotic? What is erotic? <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. All right. Well, let's see what Dear Abby had to say. She says, "Dear Violated, unless your mother-in-law, ins- <laughs> unless your mother-in-law insists on sleeping between you and her son when she comes to visit, Ooh, I do good. think you're overreacting." Which we talked about. Uh, what What she did was give you a back rub. In most families, a gesture like that is one of affection. Lighten up. With the oh God, exclamation really? point. So she's like, listen, bitch, shut the fuck up. Lighten your ass up. The bitch just rubbed your back because you had a bad day. She didn't yeah. shove her two fingers up your cunt, you know? Yeah, but she Phillips completely missed the part where she felt her ass up, too. I mean, was her ass sore? It was her felt like, you know, my right butt cheek has been killing me along with my hip. I mean, I mean... I don't know. I know a mother-in-law. I don't know how old this chick is, but she's got to know where the ass ends and the fucking hip begins. Hey, sometimes that's where you put all your stress is in your asshole. So, <laughs> so this, this, I this. I don't know about all my stress, but I put all my something else in my <laughs> <laughs> So this kind, loving mother-in-law knew that. 
show to rap the asshole. I think it's fine. Whatever. So you even know, Dear... I think, I think it was Dear Abby with the mother-in-law. That's why she's like, lighten up, bitch. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I was giving you a back rub, you fucking I bitch. Just, you back rub? Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and this chick doesn't know because she's calling her fucking Gene Phillips every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to number three. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> so you want to read it? Are we just going to read it to our show? She doesn't know because she's called her dream <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Okay, so we'll just read this to ourselves and make comments, I guess. What? No, who's fucking reading it? Either Robert or Nick. Uh, dear Abby. I'm playing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Fucking title. Yeah. Well, there's no title. No. Again, sorry for the cursing listening to Bird's Point. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, here at it. I'm playing my son's bar mitzvah. Bar uh, mitzvah. Uh, and my ex husband. Wait a minute, okay. Question. Is this when they cut the dick off, or is that when they're babies? No, this is older. They do that when they're babies, I think. Yeah, bar mitzvah is like 13. I thought it was like, I'm, you know, you're 13 years old now. Try to flop your dick out here. I got my meat cleaver. What's a frisk? I, I never understood that. I, I don't know what a bar mitzvah is then. A bar mitzvah is when you become a man and you do a dance and they put you on a okay. chair and you dance so what around. So you bring the hooker in and make you like do her? That's what I say. Don't you become a man by like getting your dick chopped off? No, you get your dick chopped off when you're like. Like if what? Like, like you chopped off, you become less of a man. That's true. Dear Abby, I'm playing in my son's bar mitzvah. My ex-husband hasn't lifted a finger to help me. I received two small checks for his portion of the guests who will attend the reception. My question is, should I put his name on the invitation? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. My name on it, since I'm the one hosting and putting the party together. Wow. I wonder, but I also wanted to make clear that I made, I did the playing myself. All right, hold on. So this, this, this person, we'll call them. This guy's cutting her two checks for the, everybody that's going to attend on his side of the family. And she's like, should I put his his, his name on the invitation? Do I even? Honestly, if, if this guy's giving you two checks, it's like, if, if, you know. What it brings an up, ungrateful biatch, man. Exactly. Yeah. It brings the whole point, like, you know, you pay child support every day, but yet your kid doesn't have a yeah, bad listen, listen, Hiram is doing the best he can <laughs> here. And this fucking bitch, how dare you only give me 50 grand for this bar mitzvah? <laughs> or, <laughs> how do dare you only give me 50 grand for this bar mitzvah? <laughs> and she's hosting and putting the party together, yet, and all he's doing is paying. Right, Hiram, Hiram Goldstein is practically paying for Listen, the entire yeah. party, and all she has to do is make a few phone calls and check yeah, bitching. Exactly. Out. Like, she's probably Listen. got a caterer, and she's got like a party planner. She's like, I did all the planning. I called the party planner myself. <laughs> I'm super clipped. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Rebecca Goldstein needs to realize that this party is not about her. Oh. It's about her son who's about to get his dick chopped off. It's about little Jehovah Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. It's about little Daniel here. It's not about you and putting together your fucking party. Oh, I'm so I'm so annoyed. No wonder Hiram left her. He's like, I'm all hush look at I am Goldstein. I can find another lady. <laughs> uh, okay, so alright. So uh Alex, what's your what's your advice? I, I don't even have an advice for his. I'd be like, you're, shut the fuck up. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm planning. I'm doing, oh, I got to make all the calls and, you know, so-and-so is paying for the, shut up. Jesus Christ. I don't know. It, it's annoying to me. It's absolutely annoying to me that this woman's going to be bitching. That's it. I, I, I got nothing. I'm, I'm just. Okay, listen, my advice is go buy yourself a dildo. You're obviously so uptight. I mean, listen, ever since Hiram left you. I mean, he's living a good life. I mean, he's obviously paying for your entire existence, and you're bitter and angry. Go buy a dildo. Give yourself some happiness, for the love of God. For the love of fucking Jehovah. Yeah. Hmm. But my advice to her is to, you know, it's all about the son getting his, his foreskin chopped off at that point, right? So maybe invest in some cream and just stop complaining. You know, I mean, help your boy out, because this wiener is going to be just... 
terrible. Now we establish that they do not really <laughs> lose hey, listen, listen, what, at that age, right? Experts in culture here? I'm sorry, now we're the culture experts. <laughs> yeah, I don't know when they lose at that age. So, so when your son loses his penis and grows a star of David, then... <laughs> Isn't this... You know, bar mitzvah, they, they sing the bar mitzvah song and uh, light his penis, you know, the 13 candles of Gomorrah or something, you know? <laughs> So on my advice, dude, uh, you know what, from, from what I read right here, I, what I see is that he's paying for everything. He's not only probably paying for the bar mitzvah, he's paying child support, he's paying alimony, he's paying everything. And he's a she's, lawyer. Yeah, she, and he's a lawyer. <laughs> she's so spiteful that she just, she wants to leave his name off of everything, even though he's doing everything. His, you know, honestly, his should be the only name on the invitation. He's paying for everything. All you're doing is calling people to fucking come. Well, God oh, forbid the bitch has to wake up in the morning. And place a call to the ice sculpture or the, uh, hey, the, um, pig. kosher, the kosher pig that's going to be there, whatever the fuck they eat. You know what I mean? And. Kosher <laughs> pig. <laughs> yeah. Again, culture police. <laughs> we don't know they don't eat pork. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. We shook it up. I don't know. <laughs> no, but you know what, though? Uh, she, yeah, you're right, though. She's going to wake up. What does she got to do? She got a whole day of non-working to do. What you, the fuck? You know what I picture? I picture Mike Myers when he did that fucking Saturday Night Live skit. Like a big roll of butter. Yeah, that oy vey kind of bullshit. Just kind of, uh, you know. <laughs> that is that is my Jewish oppression. I say that every time I bust <laughs> oh, uh, I'm so <laughs> Necessary to admit it, so that you can get the credit. That's All right, you bitch. need to do is confide in one yenta. <laughs> oh my god! But your son's father is a snorer. <laughs> 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 These are all parentheses too. Okay, so all you need is to do is confide in the yenta that your son's father is a snorer, <laughs> and word will get around. Trust me, word will get around. What? Okay. Snorer. That is the equivalent of hanging around with black people and saying yo and dog and stuff like that. So it's like you got a black person write in and all of a sudden dear Abby's like, yo, listen up, son. For G- for Sheezy. <laughs> Look, dear Abby pretty much fits the stereotype here. She's saying Jews are dirty, dirty fucking like gossipers. Cause she's like, word will get around, period. Trust me, period. <laughs> like I know you fucking Jews. It'll get around. So a snorer is... Well, I'm a snorer. I a, snore every night. It's a sleep. Yiddish term meaning beggar or sponger. That doesn't make any sense because he's not sponging off of anybody. If anything, he's the opposite. Is he's that really what it means? It's Yes. I looked it up on Wiki. Okay, so so, so, so wife, fucking... It's his wife who's a schnar. He's paying for everything. Yeah! And she's taking all the money in. So, dear Abby, you're stupid and you don't even know how to Wikipedia a term that you're trying to use in one of your articles. Sorry. What's, what's a yenta? Um, so I'm sorry, I, I did have to... I think it's like a Bigfoot in the Himalayas. <laughs> so this, this, this fucking Gene Phillips bitch is, is, is saying, because your husband's paying for everything, he's a sponge. He's a leech on society. Yeah, it makes no sense. It's the op- he's the opposite. He's the opposite of that. He's a yeah. roar... Sh- sh- <laughs> <It's a fact. laughs> yeah. And hey, listen, is a Iron Yiddish, Gold you know, name, you which is general, generically used for an old gossip. So basically, this woman's a yenta. He's not a shorer, 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 and 
Dear Abby didn't even know enough to Google the terms that she's putting in her own damn articles. Right. Well, I think what we take from this whole... I think what we take from this whole Dear Abby thing is the only Jewish term I know is (laughs) Meshugana. I think... I think that's what we've established. Do what? I said, I don't even know what it means. I just know Mike Myers said it. <laughs> that's all. That's my reference term. Yeah. Let's check it. I mean, uh, I don't know, some Saturday Night Live thing. <laughs> it means comedy, you know. Saturday Night Live. <laughs> uh, well, in, uh, I guess we're not going to be financed by any, uh, anybody <laughs> in Hollywood here for our podcast. Uh, we we yeah. can't milk chips in on the line. Oi! <laughs> Oy vey! Uh, you know, it does just make clear we are totally on Hiram Goldstein's side. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, what I think we established is, uh, yeah, we don't know shit about any kind of race or, <laughs> <laughs> or, or any culture whatsoever. But we do know that the good old days consist of... <laughs> <laughs> Women wearing beautiful dresses and doing what they're told. That is... While vacuuming. Exactly. Drinking whiskey and smoking a cigarette. All at the same time. Yes. Double pearl necklace. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 also, I do have Speaking to Speaking of. So we, we have used the term and the reference. I, I know we cussed on a little bit in the front. And, it, and, you know, it's the theme song. Well, the for this week, for episode four, it was a theme song. Boots and Cats. Um, it, it, how, do, how do you find it, Alex? How do you find that song? Type in it's, Boots. It's, it's a work of art. Boots and Cats on YouTube, and it is the most stupid shit, brilliant masterpiece that I've ever seen. It is just so dumb. It's brilliant. There's nothing more to say. It's just brilliant. Do we want to end the podcast with a, uh, a sampling of Boots and Cats? Oh, we have, my friend, little did you know, we started it Ooh. as Boots and Cats and ended with Boots and Cats. Okay. And hopefully we don't get sued. <laughs> for using Boots and Cats. Well, I hope our four listeners don't report us. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, listeners, tell your friends. Uh, they will be uh, better than this one. I pray to God. <laughs> and that's all I got. And would so, you guys say, pass this around. Pass it on to everybody you know. Yeah, pass it around. It will get better. And we will have a website soon. Yes. And send us all of your uh, advice columns or needed emails to Rob. Uh, the big beef co at gmail.com. And any questions you'd like to give advice or have advice given to you as well. Because we are the experts of that, as you can see from our Meshuggah line right there. Our, uh, our advice is quite sound. I, I really think that you would be doing yourself a favor. If you would uh, email in and uh, ask us your questions that you need advice on. I agree. Now let's just kind of <laughs> <laughs> peter yeah. out with the fucking... Again, just another example of why Awkward Silence isn't just a clever name. <laughs> <laughs> and again, there. Beats. 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 Let the beef cats be beef cats bees beef beef and boots and a beefy bison beef cats bees beef bees cats let the beef 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 cats bees beef beef let the beef be boots.